Praise the Lord. It's been a tremendous, been a tremendous week for me this week. But it's been a good week. We got everything done that we, <clears throat> we wanted to do. <clears throat> and we just praise the Lord. I want to share something this morning that's going to fit a whole lot of us. And if it don't fit, you just stand still for a little bit. It will. Satan is after us. Amen. Satan is after us. There's only two forces. The forces is good and evil. And the forces of Satan and his demons and Jesus Christ and his followers. Amen. Jesus represents light. Satan and his demons represent darkness. Let me read from God's Word. Luke chapter 22, verses 31 through 34. Luke chapter 22, verses 31 through 34. Many people say, and I've heard this many times, that once you're saved, your, your, your road is straight and no potholes, nothing in it. Well, my relationship with Jesus is strong and real, and there have been a lot of potholes in my relationship. That's just the way it is. Because life within itself is going to bring situations. It's going to bring circumstances and conditions that you need Jesus to bring you through. Starting with verse 31. And the Lord said, and that's Jesus saying, and the Lord said, Mine's the King James, yours will say more than likely say Peter, if not. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desired to have you, that he may send you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy, that, that, that thy faith fail not when thou art converted, strengthen my brethren. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and into death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before that thou hast twice denied me, thou knowest me. Now let's go ahead and read off. Well, that's all. No, let's go ahead. In verse 35, And he said unto them, When I sent you without purse and scrip and shoes, lack ye anything? And they said nothing. Then said he unto them, But now he that hath a purse, let him take it, and likewise his scrip, that's money. And he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. For I say unto you, that this that is written, must he be accomplished in me. And he was reckoned among the transgressors, for the things concerning me have an end. I want you to know, that these scriptures tell you to protect yourself. I love people that are very passive, but I will protect my family. I will protect this church, the members of this church. I will protect you according to the word of God. But let's go on with the message. Satan is after us. In these last days, Satan is doing all that he can to destroy and defeat you and I as believers. Jesus told Peter that Satan desired to have you and to sift you as wheat. Satan desires first you as a believer, then you as a believer that makes up this body of believers. Satan wants to sift you, and Satan wants to sift those that part of this church as wheat. And that's just the way it is. Satan wants to destroy you. Satan wants to make you think that you don't need Jesus Christ. But Satan is a liar. He's a father of all lies. So let's get on with the good part though. Jesus said, I have prayed for you. First, I want you to understand that Jesus knows about this. And that Jesus is praying for Peter just like he said. And Jesus knows your situation, condition, or circumstances as well. And I believe that we can apply this to our lives as well. I believe that Jesus is praying for us right now. Amen. Amen. 
I believe that Jesus knows and Jesus is greater. Somebody might say, well, why go through all that? Well, a lot of people has to be brought to their knees in order to believe in Jesus Christ. Not because Jesus Christ is mean, not because Jesus Christ is trying to get even, but because Jesus Christ died for your sins, and Jesus Christ don't want to see anybody spend eternity in hell separated from God. That's the love of my Jesus. Oh, religion tells you you got to do this or that. My Jesus done did all of this and that. And my Jesus says, all you have to do is follow me. Follow my word. For I am with you until the ends of this age, the ends of this earth, as we know it. Jesus is praying especially for you. Jesus is praying especially for me. No matter what. While I was underneath the trail trying to find out what's going on. And I didn't know. Jesus says, I am with you in all things. I am with you. And whatever situation you might find yourself in, call out to Jesus because He's right there. He's right there with you. And He knows. And He's going to bring you through. And that's a promise from God's Word. Give me a amen. 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 And that's a big amen. Jesus is with you, especially He's praying for you. Say, He's praying especially for me. He's praying especially for me. And that's what He's doing. Turn your life over to Jesus and let Him have it. Me and you, you and me, as believers, something happens when we gather together. Something takes place when we gather together. The power of God is unleashed. And that power of God is to bring us through in order for us to enter into Him. Enter into His goodness. Enter into His blessings. Don't give up. Hold tight. When you're trying to get close to God, when you're trying to walk with God, and when you're trying to walk after God, remember this. Satan is trying to stop you, but Jesus is praying for you. I remember a couple of years ago, me and Mickey was walking this, this uh, I guess your driveway there and back, I believe it was five times, but I kept getting rocks in my shoe. And I couldn't figure it out. You know, I, I didn't say I was the smartest person in the world, but I'm not the dumbest either. And I'm so thankful I'm not a politician, amen. That's a big amen, amen. But praise be to God. And, and you know, when I take my shoe off and boom, boom, and then get it out, we walk some more. And I say, that thing must be having a bunch of little baby locks of pebbles. Well, I had a hole in my shoe. When I found out the problem, I was able to correct the problem, and I didn't have little pebbles in my shoe. That's the same thing with us as believers. When things are not going right, we need to find out why. Turn it over to Jesus. Address the problem. Let Him have it, and He'll take care of it for us. That's a promise from God. Amen. And I like that promise. I need all the help I can get. Amen. And everything, and everything. I need all the help that I can Amen. get. Praise God. I remember when I was going to the VA clinic when I had cancer. And they, they was going to, whatever they were doing, whatever. But on the way to coming back, we stopped off at uh, some kind of little hamburger place. I never liked it. Wendy was on I don't know what it was. But anyway, I got me, a, I think it was a Snickers with almonds. The worst thing I ever did. That candy bar cost me a fortune. I bit into that thing and I broke a tooth off. And that, and that thing hurt. I've never hurt like that before. It throbbed and it throbbed. I'd take an IV proper, that thing would throb. I'd take two IV proper and that thing would laugh at me and throb a little bit harder. Amen. But i tell you what, God provided an antidote. And that antidote, they call it a dentist. Amen. And that dentist took care of it. You see, I needed help. Amen. And God provided the help that I needed. Amen. So I'm praising God for that. But you know, if you're trying to get close to God, if you're trying to walk with God, if you're trying to talk with God, Satan is trying everything that he can do to stop you. He's going to throw things across your pathway to stop you. But I'm here to tell Satan right now, watch out. My Jesus is bigger than you, and my angels are stronger than your demons. So watch out. God is praying for me, 
He's got me in his sights. So y'all better watch out, you little bookers. Because my Jesus is getting ready to take care of you. And we have an amen. 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 And it's coming. Amen. But what I'm saying here is that we have to depend upon God for everything. We have to depend. How many here are thankful for your breath? Have you ever thought about that? ISIS has got to breathe. Russians have got to breathe. Heathens have got Everybody's got to breathe that's got life. Right? I can't figure out why everybody just can't start praising God and thanking Him for the breath of life and leave everybody else alone. Can I have an amen on that? We need to start praying for people and loving people. Hallelujah, but breath, that's so valuable. Look, I, I know a lot of people, they try to get every penny they can. For some reason, it's never enough. They can have $100 million in the bank, and that's still not enough. They got to have more. But I, when I was down south, I never did it up here, but when I was down south, people would have emphysema so bad that they could hardly breathe. And they'd have oxygen, and they'd take the oxygen off and smoke a cigarette and put it back home, and they, they, they'd say they would give everything that they had for one more breath. Everything for one more breath. Aren't we blessed? Amen. 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 I just took two breaths. They cost me nothing. Isn't Jesus good? Amen. He is good. Don't let Satan come in and cause you to doubt. When you start to doubt, Satan is robbing you of your answer to prayer. Don't let Satan come in. Don't let him come in. The reason for God allowing Satan to have his desire with you and this church, I believe, is this. To simp is to get all the impurities out. I know myself. Now, please listen to me. Don't take offense. But I look in the mirror. And I say, Holy Spirit, reveal to me what I don't know that's in me. And I want to confess it. I want to get it out now. Look, there's a lot of things in us that we just don't know. It, it can come from our, our, our grandparents, our parents, etc., etc. A lot of things. But once you know the situation, once you know what the problem is, you know how to fix it. Mickey and Diane was coming back from from uh, Mobile, Alabama. And their vehicle broke down. They knew somebody that knew how to fix it because he knew how to diagnose the problem. And in turn, when he diagnosed the problem, he knew how to fix it. Or she knew how to fix it. Can I have an amen? amen. But before we can fix something, we got to know what the problem is. If you're not, I'm not saying y'all, but maybe somebody might be hearing this on YouTube. If you have an addiction of alcohol or, or whatever else, before you can address that, you've got to know what the root cause of it is. Then you go after the root cause because if you can get the root cause, you're going to take care of the problem. You just can't weed it. That, that, you know, sometimes I wonder, I'm out there working hard and I'm weed eating more sweat just pouring down through the little. Two weeks later, that grass is back up and I got to do it again. Amen? We, the same thing can happen to people who have addiction. You have to know the cause of it. I got a book coming out. You have to know the cause of it in order to address the cause, in order to pull it out. Y'all with me? To pull it out so you don't go back to it. Satan is trying to destroy it. But well, keep this in mind. To sift is to get all the impurities out. Sometimes it's good to be sifted. Sometimes it's good to get all the impurities out. Start praising God. Amen. Praise God. Lord. God, you getting me, you getting me clean. Well, somebody will say, Well, preacher, I'm already blood bought. I know you're blood bought, but you're still in a human body with frailties. And you're still in a human body with weaknesses. And you need to depend totally upon God for that. Come on, y'all with me on that? Amen. we got to depend upon God to get it out. 
Somebody say, you don't know what you're talking about. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. But how many, how many preachers, how many big time preachers with mega churches have fallen because of sexual addiction? I think I know what I'm talking about. Somebody might say, well, they're not saved. Well, that's your answer. Go on home. Drink some more coffee. But I believe there is a reason for it. And we can help them. Can we have an amen on that? Amen. We're not, let Satan, we're not going to let Satan have the upper hand. Satan is not going to have the upper hand. Why? I like this. Jesus is on the right hand of the Father. Making a request from God on our behalf. On your behalf, on my behalf, on our loved one's behalf. Pray for your loved one. Don't quit praying. Amen? Amen. Don't quit praying. When you come to realize in your spirit what the devil is doing, you're going to come back to God and you're going to be stronger than when you have ever been. Jesus says, Peter, you're going to deny me three times. Peter said, oh no, Lord. And Peter, I believe, was honest. He was telling the truth. He was saying what he thought he would do. But when the time came, what Jesus said come to pass, Peter denied Jesus three times. I believe the last time, is that when Peter looked upon Jesus' eyes and Jesus looked upon Peter's eyes, Peter realized what he said to Jesus. Peter realized what he did to Jesus. And when those two eyes, when those four eyes met, there was a change in Peter. And she, Peter would never go back. Peter was with Jesus from that time on. Peter realized himself and he turned himself over to Jesus and by turning himself over to Jesus Peter was stronger than he ever was and he never failed Jesus from that point on sometimes we gotta fail a little bit sometimes we might have to fall a little bit but when we let Jesus correct our failures and when we let Jesus pick us up we're never gonna be the same again yeah. We're never going to be the same again. Never. Never be the same again. You're going to come back to God stronger than you ever been. Now when you and I, and as a church, realize that Satan trying to do, that's trying to do to us, trying to do to our families, trying to do to our loved ones, We can come together and pray. Amen. And when we come together and pray, brothers and sisters, in unity there is strength. In unity there is strength. Amen. I want to pray for you. I don't want to find out about all your baggage. I have an office, and if you want to, we'll talk. Would that be, just be between three of us? That's you, me, and God. No one else. And then I just want to pray for them. And let God have it. Amen? The power of God is released when we come together, just like we are here right now, praying one for one another. We need to pray for our nation. We need to pray for the love, the concern that we have as Christians for one another. It's hard for me to understand when one group of believers, they say they believe in Jesus, and another group of believers say they believe in Jesus, and they want to fight and hurt each other. I, I, I can't understand that. Jesus wants us to love each other and care for each other and help each other. Lift each other up. Because you know what? We never know when we might be down and need somebody to lift us up as well. And I can say that about my car. Me and Bones was in the car. And I said this. I want to say it again because this is important. 
Bones is my dog. I call Bones, I call her Nerd. She's a nerd. That's my Bones. I buy a sister a sausage biscuit, I get two. Bones needs one too, amen? But anyway, it was cold and the car broke, the battery wouldn't start. I needed help. I needed help. It's cold. I'd have looked funny in the car hugging Bones, but anyway, it was cold. And God sent help. You see, you never know when you need help. Let's help each other. Let's love each other. Lord. Let's care for each other. Amen. Jesus cares for us. Lord. He created all of us in His image. He created all of us. Can, can y'all say all? All. God created all of us. I don't care where you're from in the world today. God created you in His image. Amen. And He created you for a purpose. Amen. And that purpose is to care for each other. Again, we need to care for each other. I believe Satan is after us. But I believe that this is a message straight to the, to the Father's house right now. God, God is still God and He's still King. He's still the Messiah. And when Satan comes after us, turn it over to Jesus. And Jesus is going to take care of you. Can I have a name? We're going we're gonna to be victorious. Not because of what we can say. Not because of what we can do. We're going to be victorious because the one we follow <coughs> said it was finished on the cross of Calvary. And when Jesus said it was finished on the cross of Calvary, it is finished. We have power. We have power in the Word of God that no one else has. We have that power when we come and we bow down and we worship and we praise Jesus Christ. The power of God is going to be unleashed through us to others to help others. Amen. To lift others out. Amen. Can we have an amen on that? Amen. Amen. I remember that I'm going to close with this. Me and Inez, we went down south in Independence. Inez was feeling better than she was now. That's been about five years ago. And we wanted to go see the church where we pastored and some friends in that area. And it was raining, it been raining hard. And water, it was on a hill like, and the water was coming down. They had a big ditch there. About, and I was backing Inez's car up, and for some reason it started to slip into the ditch, and it went like this. Praise God. It didn't go any further because I asked for the ground right in there for that water. But what I'm saying is, the first thought I had was to pull the car out. Well, if we'd have pulled the car out, the undercarriage, everything underneath the car would have been scraped. That would have been major repair. Two young men that I ministered to when they were 13 and 12 years old, they're grown men with kids right now, they're old right now, had a John Deere tractor. They didn't hook that tractor to the back of the car and pull it. They, they hooked it to the, the, the front end loader of that tractor, put a rope on it, and they pulled the car up to where the car was, was on its two front wheels. Y'all got it? And it turned and pulled it out. No problem. You see, we needed help. I never could have drowned it in that accident. We, could, we never could have got her out. Number two, we'd have tore the car up and we'd have pulled it out. Number three, God says, I'm taking care of y'all because I'm not finished with y'all yet. Amen. Amen. That's what God is saying right now. Some of y'all might be in a ditch. Some of y'all might say, look, I just need to be pulled out. God says, no, you don't need to be pulled out. You need to be pulled up and then, then in turn pulled out. Y'all got me this morning? Amen. Right now, God is saying, I am pulling you out, but I'm pulling you out in a way that nothing will be hurt. There will be no harm. And when I get you out of that ditch, you get back in the car and you can go wherever I have you to go. Can I have a amen? So Heavenly Father, we turn this service now over to you. In Jesus' name, amen.